Hello, my peepers. Welcome to Shaleen's Creativity Room. We are going to do a stitch with me and listen to a book today. Audio. And then we'll start. I have to find it. Hmm. Welcome to A Stitch With Me. Today, the book is Verity by Colleen Hoover. I can honestly say this was a really, really good book. One of the best I have read this year. Chapter 1. I hear the crack of his reaches me. I gasp and take a quick step back onto the sidewalk. One of my heels doesn't clear the curb, so I grip the pole of a no parking sign to steady myself. The man was in front of me a matter of seconds ago. We were standing in a crowd of people waiting for the crosswalk light to illuminate when he stepped into the street prematurely, resulting in a run-in with a truck. I lunged forward in an attempt to stop him, grasping at nothing as he went down. I closed my eyes before his head went under the tire, but I heard it pop like the cork of a champagne bottle. He was in the wrong looking casually down at his phone, probably a side effect of crossing the same street without incident many times before, death by routine. People gasp, but no one screams. The passenger of the offending vehicle jumps out of the truck and is immediately on his knees near the man's body. I back away from the scene as several people rush forward to help. I don't have to look at the man under the tire to know he didn't survive that. I only have to look down at my once white shirt, at the blood now splattered across it, to know that a hearse would serve him better than an ambulance. I spin around to move away from the accident, to find a place to take a breath, but the crosswalk sign now says walk and the thick crowd takes heed, making it impossible for me to swim upstream in this Manhattan River. Some don't even look up from their cell phones as they pass right by the accident. I stop trying to move and wait for the crowd to thin. I glance back toward the accident, careful not to look directly at the man. The driver of the truck is now at the rear of the vehicle, wide-eyed, on a cell phone. Three, maybe four, people are assisting them. A few are led by their morbid curiosities, filming the gruesome scene with their phones. If I were still living in Virginia, this would play out in a completely different manner. Every run around would stop. Panic would ensue. People would be screaming. A news crew would be on scene in a matter of minutes. But here in Manhattan, a pedestrian stuck struck by a vehicle happens so often, it's not much more than an inconvenience. A delay in traffic for some, a ruined wardrobe for others. This probably happens so often it won't even end up in print. As much as the indifference in some of the people here disturbs me, it's exactly why I moved to this city 10 years ago. 
People like me belong in overpopulated cities. The state of my life is irrelevant in a place this size. There are few more people here with stories much more pitiful than mine. Here, I'm invisible, unimportant. Manhattan is too crowded to give a shit about me, and I love her for it. Are you hurt? I look up at a man as he touches my arm and scans my shirt. Deep concern is embedded in his expression as he looks me up and down, assessing me for injuries. I can tell by his reaction that he isn't one of the more hardened New Yorkers. He might live here now, but wherever he's from, it's a place that didn't completely beat the empathy out of him. Are you hurt? The stranger repeats, looking me in the eye this time. No, it's not my blood. I was standing near him when I stopped speaking. I just saw a man die. I was so close to him, his blood is on me. I moved to the city to be invisible, but I am certainly not impenetrable. It's something I've been working on, attempting to become as hardened as the concrete beneath my feet. It hasn't been working out so well. I can feel everything I just witnessed settling in my stomach. I cover my mouth with my hand, but pull it away quickly when I feel something sticky on my lips. More blood. I look down at my shirt. So much blood. None of it mine. I pinch at my shirt and pull it away from my chest, but it sticks to my skin in spots where the blood splatters are beginning to dry. I think I need water. I'm starting to feel lightheaded, and I want to rub my forehead, pinch my nose, but I'm scared to touch myself. I look up at the man still gripping my arm. Is it on my face? I ask him. He presses his lips together and then darts his eyes away, scanning the street around us. He gestures toward a coffee shop a few doors down. They'll have a bathroom, he says, pressing his hand against the small of my back as he leads me in that direction. I look across the street at the Panton Press building I was headed to before the accident. I was so close, 15, maybe 20 feet away from a meeting I desperately need to be in. I wonder how close the man who just died was to his destination. The stranger holds the door open for me when we reach the coffee shop. A woman carrying a coffee in each hand attempts to squeeze past me through the doorway until she sees my shirt. She scurries backward to get away from me, allowing us both to enter the building. I move towards the women's restroom, but the door is locked. The man pushes open the door to the men's restroom and motions for me to follow him. He doesn't lock the door behind us as he walks to the sink and turns on the water. I look in the mirror, relieved to see it isn't as bad as, as bad as I'd feared. There are a few spatters of blood on my cheeks that are beginning to darken and dry and the spray above my eyebrows, but luckily the shirt took the brunt of it. The man hands me wet paper towels and I wipe at my face while he wets another handful. I can smell the blood now. The taininess in the air sends my mind whirling back to when I was 10. The smell of blood was strong enough to remember it all these years later. I attempt to hold my breath at the onset of more nausea. I don't want to puke, but I want the shirt off me now. I unbutton it with trembling fingers, then pull it off and place it under the faucet. I let the water do its job while I take the other wet paper towels from the stranger and begin wiping the blood off my chest. He heads for the door, but instead of giving me privacy while I stand here in my least attractive bra, he locks us inside the bathroom so no one will walk in on me while I'm shirtless. 
is disturbingly chivalrous and leaves me feeling uneasy. I'm tense as I watch him through the reflection in the mirror. Someone knocks. Be right out, he says. I relax a little, comforted, comforted by the thought that someone outside this door would hear me scream if I needed to. I focus on the blood until I'm certain I've washed it all off my neck and chest. I inspect my hair next, turning left to right in the mirror, but find only an inch of dark roots above fading caramel. Here, the man says, fingering the last button on his crisp white shirt. Put this on. He's already moved, removed his suit jacket, which is now hanging from the doorknob. He frees himself of his button-up shirt, revealing a white undershirt beneath it. He's muscular, taller than me. His shirt will swallow me. I can't wear this into my meeting, but I have no other option. I take the shirt when he hands it to me. I go Well, everybody, it seems that this does not want to play anymore. But that was Verity. It's loading again. I hope it's not starting from the beginning. Welcome. Yep, to it a is. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I am going to have to call it it. Usually I try to do a full chapter, but it didn't work right today. And I have to find a better way for you guys to listen to it. But that is it. For today, I did get in a few stitches. Again, that was Verity by Colleen Hoover. I know it wasn't much for you to listen to. There was almost half an hour of recording time. I do not know what happened. But, yeah. That's it. That's what I got done. I will have the link below to the company that sold me this. I do not know if the owl is still available. And I will have the book linked below to Amazon. I am an Amazon affiliate, so it is an affiliate link. Thank you so much for watching this short little video. I hope that you enjoyed it a little bit. The book was really, really good. I I'm, I don't understand what happened, but... Um, I'm going to have to find a better way to record it or play it back or something. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for next week's book. Bye-bye.